No mai, haere mai, ki tamaki painga hera. Welcome here to Auckland Museum Online. Ko Muriel Tokungua, my name is Muriel, and very shortly you'll be meeting Zara. Today we're looking at treasures and tales, bizarre butterflies. If you'd like to watch the session again, it is being recorded and you can look at it on our website at the at home section. If you have any burning butterfly questions as we go through our discovery, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll hopefully get them get to them at the Q&A session at the end. If we don't, we'll write a reply to you hopefully too. All right, let's fly in. Auckland Museum is home to over 13,000 butterflies gifted to us by Ray Shannon. As you can see here, there are so many different colors and patterns. It's amazing and it's no wonder that a group of butterflies is called a kaleidoscope. There are so many different colors, but butterflies can also be different in size. What do you think is the largest butterfly in the world? It's the female Queen Alexandra's birdwing found in the rainforests of Papua New Guinea. It's 32 centimeters wide as its wingspan. That is the length of a chihuahua, the little dog you see there on the screen. What about the smallest butterfly in the world? Ah, that's the Western Pygmy Blue Butterfly and it's only 1.5 centimeters. It's like the size of a little peanut. So great differences between these butterflies. But they all have something in common. They are insects. Did you know that? Insects. And here we have insect body parts. Te tenana o narara. Which bits do you know? So insects have antennae up here. Puhihi for sensing the world around them. They have compound eyes, mataro, and we'll get a little bit more into that later. They have six legs, wai wai ono. And as all insects do, they have three main body parts, the head, mahunga, the thorax, tarauma, and the abdomen. Takapu. Let's take a closer look at some butterflies. So this is Ruby here and she's a scientist here at Auckland Museum and one of the parts of her job is looking at and studying insects. So this picture here is her looking at a super zoomed in image of a butterfly through a microscope and you can see that in the images on the side that when you zoom in super close on a butterfly wing you can see the tiny little scales covering the whole wing all with different shapes and colors which is pretty amazing so we're going to use some of these super zoomed in images to look at different body parts that mural has just gone through with you and you're going to have to have a guess at which body part you think it is. And there'll be a little green timer bar at the bottom of the screen, there you go. And that's eight seconds that you have to guess what part of the insect you're looking at. So this part was, or is, the thorax, which is one of the parts that Muriel just mentioned. Okay, so this one I didn't mention, but I think a few of you out there will be able to get it to get it. So it's really close in, zoomed in on a butterfly, and it allows them to drink. That's right, the proboscis. So butterflies mainly like to drink nectar, but they do sometimes need to drink other things too. Look at these butterflies here. They are drinking a muddy puddle. It's called mud puddling. And the reason they do it is to get all the salts and minerals that they need. But some butterflies 
they have even more unusual venues they like to go to for their salts. This is the Julia butterfly. And the Julia butterfly likes to drink the tears of a turtle. But wait, it gets more bizarre. The Julia butterfly also likes to tickle the eyes of a crocodile until it cries and then, you guessed it, drink up all those salty tears. <laughs> Once again, we have a zoomed in image. This is something that all insects have in common. They have six of these. A leg, why why? So zoomed in. And what's amazing about butterflies legs and their feet is that they have lots of taste buds on their feet. So if a butterfly was to land on you, it would be tasting your skin. It would probably decide you were not suitable to lay an egg on and it would go find an egg to do that on. But what else you can see in this image are all the little hairs hanging down. When a butterfly lands on a flower, these little hairs that you see, they take up the pollen. And then the butterfly carries the pollen from one flower to another so that the flower can then produce a seed called pollination and it's pretty amazing and highly necessary for the whole world. You can also see in this picture the butterfly is using its proboscis again. So here's another pretty cool zoomed in image. It's one that insect part that Mural has mentioned. Can you guess what it might be? There's two of them. Well you probably guessed it. It is one of the antennae that come out of a butterfly's head. It's a pretty neat little part of its body. And something really cool about antennae is that we can look at the shape of them. If you look at it, it's kind of got like a clubbed shape to it. And that's how we can tell the difference between moths and butterflies. Because sometimes moths and butterflies can look pretty similar. But if you think about the shape of a butterfly's antennae, which of these two images do you think is of a butterfly? Have a look at the antennae. So here it is. The one that is a butterfly is the one on the right hand side, which almost looks like it could be a moth. But if you look at the shape of the antennae, it's got that club look. Whereas the other image, which is actually a moth, has more of a feathery sort of antennae. So that's one way you can tell the difference if you're out in your garden and you're trying to figure out if you're looking at a butterfly or a moth, you can look at the shape of the antennae. Another way that you can tell the difference is that butterflies often, when they land, they'll land with their wings right up above their head like that, as you can see in the picture. Whereas moths, when they land, they'll have their wings out to the sides of their body, like you can see in this image. So that's one way you can tell the difference. All right, here we have another zoomed in image. Hmm, lots and lots of circular bits and pieces. Bit shiny, bit bubbly, bubble wrap. Ah, no. It's once again another part of a butterfly, the compound eye, Mataro. So the compound eye, well, butterflies have two eyes, but within each of those eyes, are lots and lots of these little independent light receptors where the butterfly can take in all the light. This means they see a bit differently to us. Butterflies have a bit of a fuzzier image, not quite as crystal clear as us, but they can view a wider angle and they can detect fast movement which would be pretty handy if you're a tiny little insect and lots of things like to eat you. The other thing about butterfly vision is that they can see in UV light. Let's look at what this might look like. So here we see what we see, a yellow flower, but butterflies 
remember it being a bit fuzzier than this, they see the UV. It's like a little bullseye right where all the nectar is. And that's what they want to find. So that nectar spot is highlighted for them with their UV vision. And in they'd go with their proboscis. Drink up all that nectar. Such a good thing. Hmm. I can see that it's got scales. It's quite veiny. It's a very distinguished orange color. Hmm. Ah. It's a wing. Parido. And it's not any wing, it's the wing of a monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies have these bright orange wings that signal to animals that want to eat them that they're dangerous, don't eat them, they're not going to taste good. But why don't they taste good? Well, it's because as caterpillars, they eat up all the milkweed, the swamp plant you can see. And that makes them taste absolutely disgusting. <laughs> the shining cuckoo will still eat them, but most other birds would just go a different direction. So some butterflies are toxic and birds know this, but other butterflies can just look like a butterfly that's toxic and then the birds won't eat them. These two butterflies look pretty similar, don't they? But this one, the common rose in the red box, is inedible. Whereas the one beside it, the common woman, well, it could be eaten, but it gets to escape often because it looks like the common rose. That's called mimicry. Oh, this is the owl butterfly. No surprising, no surprises on the name because it's got these big spots on its wings that look like owl's eyes. This butterfly absolutely loves drinking fermented banana juice and it would much rather spend its time drinking fermented banana juice than scaring away predators. So it's got these big eye spots and it looks like an owl and another animal might get frightened and think, oh goodness, that's an owl. And it would at least give the owl butterfly enough time to get away. Another pretty cool thing about some butterflies is that they're really good at camouflage, which also keeps them pretty safe. So this butterfly here, if you ever look at this image, you can see there's a sneaky butterfly hiding here right in the middle. So it's, it's kind of obvious once you know what it is. But if you kind of lean forward and look at the image, and you kind of blur your eyes, it almost just looks like a leaf that's part of the tree. So if you think about a bird flying by wanting to eat a butterfly, it might just fly right on by thinking it's a leaf or a bit of twig or something. So it's a pretty cool thing that these butterflies do. These butterflies are called leaf wing butterflies, which is a very appropriate name, especially when you look at them. Um, but a cool little fact about them is when they open their wings like this, they actually have brightly colored patterns on the top side of their wings. But to keep these patterns hidden, they close their wings up above their head and all you can see is just a brown leafy looking outside of the wing, which deters predators. So that's a pretty cool thing they can do. Another amazing little butterfly fact is that some butterflies can fly really long distances, which we call migration, which is just moving in one season of the year, moving from one part of the world to another. So one butterfly that's really well known for doing this is the painted lady butterfly, also known as Vanessa Cardui, which this butterfly is the butterfly that flies the longest single leg migration. So that means it flies all in one go and it flies all the way at the end of summer and when it's starting to get cold, it'll fly all the way from Europe, all the way across the Mediterranean Sea and then all the way across the Sahara Desert down to tropical Africa where it's much warmer, which is 
a flight of 4,000 kilometers, which is pretty huge for such a tiny little butterfly. It's a long, long way. You might be familiar with monarch butterflies and how overseas they can go on big migrations as well. But here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, our butterflies have a different trick. They go to more coastal regions, they find a big comfy tree that's got nice scratchy bark that they can perch onto, and then they all roost together. This is called overwintering. I bet you've seen some monarchs out and about, and maybe you've even planted swan plants in your garden. So New Zealand has some pretty amazing butterflies as well as the monarch that there's a whole lot of like native ones. And here's a collection of them. Um, one of which is the red admiral, which you can see on the side. It's a really beautiful butterfly. And if you were out in your own backyard or if you're out camping or anywhere outside and you wanted to have a look for this little guy, you should go and see if you could find some stingy nettle because these butterflies actually feed on stingy nettle so they're pretty awesome when you find them but just when you do go looking be careful at what the butterfly is sitting on because it could be a stingy nettle so definitely have a look out for those guys another pretty cool butterfly which is also native here in new zealand is the ro parahas copper butterfly which is found in more sort of coastal areas and it's also pretty easy to find when you're around Auckland. Like if you go to Murawai Beach and you look on the Merlin Beckia covered sand dune areas, so that's a particular type of plant, this butterfly loves to drink the nectar from Merlin Beckia. So if you go and look at Murawai Beach and go off in the dunes, you're pretty likely to see this amazing little butterfly flapping around drinking nectar. So keep an eye out for that. A butterfly that I would really love to see is the forest ringlet butterfly. It's fairly rare these days, but it's found in beech forests up in the mountains. Yeah, I'd really like to find that one day, but you'd have to have very keen, keen sight and be looking for it. You can see one photo down there is of the top of its wings and the other, the underside of its wings with the really bright white color. Well, that's, that's our show that we've got for you, but we have some time to answer some of your questions. Great. So starting with a question that's come in. Um, so the question is, we have one swan plant. Why do the monarch butterflies only like them? Yeah, so this is something that I think a lot of people have had swan plants in their garden, and sometimes if you only have one, they can get totally munched by the caterpillars and sometimes they can almost like the caterpillars run out of food. Um, so monarch butterflies, like Muriel was saying, they, because the, the babies want to eat the, um, just the toxic, they, they can only eat the plants with that gives them the toxicity to protect them. And that's the particular plant is the swan plant in New Zealand. And then there's one other plant, but it's not very common. Um, and so, yeah, these are the preferred plants of the, of the monarch. I can see a question asking, how long do monarchs live for? And monarchs live for six to eight weeks ordinarily. Oh, here's another good one. What would happen if a bird ate a toxic butterfly? So that would vary depending on the toxicity of the butterfly. But so for some birds, they just get a bit sick and unwell. But for some birds, they could also potentially die depending on the toxicity of that butterfly. Um, there's one asking, is there a good way to tell moths and butterflies apart with their pattern? Not so much. They can look really, really Tricky. similar with their, with their patterns. Yeah, so that's very hard to do. So definitely keeping an eye out for those antennae and how they're landing. Also the time of day that you're seeing them can be helpful as well because night in, in the nighttime often you're seeing moths 
and during the day often butterflies although there is a little bit of mix and match around that so there's a question here which says what is your favorite butterfly so for me my favorite butterfly is actually the red admiral butterfly which was one of the ones on the slides the last slide i think we had um which is a native new zealand butterfly and it's a pretty yeah incredible butterfly i've only ever actually seen one in the wild but it was very exciting how about you muriel what's your favorite butterfly my favorite butterfly is the morpho butterfly and it's iridescent Ooh. so its wings are really really shiny cool. there's a question from indy about how many butterfly species we have and we don't actually have a huge number in New Zealand. It is a lot less than in other parts of the world. So there are huge numbers of butterflies in South America and Asia, but we have a lot, lot less here. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us here for Treasures and Tales Bizarre Butterflies. If we haven't got to your question today, we will get to it in writing with some of our museum scientists. Thank you so much. Mā te wā. Thank you.